on today's show, we look into one grocery store that offers more than just your typical produce. And we look into one student in the spotlight outside of the hill. Finally, we look into one senior on cross country and how he is helping run the team. These stories and more on this edition of Hilltop News. What's rockin' Rock Nation, and welcome back to another episode of Hilltop News. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Veronica Volchak. And I'm Ashley Salloway. With this past weekend marking the start of October, it also marked the start of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. In honor of this at HTN, we decided to wear pink today to show support for those affected. We invite all of our Blue Hawks to join us in wearing pink, especially with their annual Pink Out game and pep rally set for next Friday. Now, as much as we can't wait for next week, we have a great show in store for you today. So first, Ashley's going to catch you up on everything going on around the hill. Ashley? Thanks, Veronica. The district released an email this past week to let Prosper ISD families see the new zoning for Walnut Grove. On October 11th, there will be an in-person meeting in the Prosper High School cafeteria at 6 p.m. to explain the zoning and gather feedback. The same meeting will be held in the Rock Hill cafeteria on the 12th at 6 p.m. On the 17th, there will be a board meeting where community feedback will be presented and any zoning changes will be announced and finalized. Finally, on the 21st, the principal of Walnut Grove will be named. Zoning is the least favorite thing we do in Prosper ISD, and while I think there are a thousand awesome things about living in a fast growth area and a fast growth district like Prosper ISD, zoning is no doubt one of the tough things because you move in, you get comfortable with your school, you love it, and then we come in and draw a line and say someone's got to go somewhere else, and, and we hate that. We don't enjoy that. Tomorrow, KD Studios will be on campus having their retakes for new ID portraits and retake portraits. The retakes will be located in the LGI and you can go down anytime after 9 a.m. or before 3 p.m. No appointments are needed ahead of time. Tomorrow, you can also join the choir and special guests from Hayes Middle School as they present their annual fall choir concert at 6.30 p.m. in the auditorium. In other musical news, Rock Hill Marching Band faced off in their first competition of the season. They did an incredible job managing to take home best music, best percussion, best color guard, and overall finished as the grand champions of the finals of the 40th annual Plano East Invitational. You can catch the band at any of their future competitions and even some upcoming sporting events. The State Fair of Texas opened this past Friday and runs until October 23rd. Free fair tickets were made available last week to all second period students. The State Fair of Texas celebrates all things Texan by promoting agriculture, education, and community involvement. Outside of our state, the East Coast is dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Ian barreled through Florida this past Wednesday and Thursday, then traveled through the Atlantic and moved back inland over South Carolina, moving people north unprepared and unevacuated, causing flash floods across South Carolina. Hurricane Ian broke off after hitting Virginia. It left over 40,000 people displaced and at least 88 people died, according to Reuters. In Frisco, headlines have been about, of all things, a grocery store opening. Ricardo Yanez looks into the brand new HEB store is proving otherwise. After years of developing a reputation down in South Texas, the famous HEB has finally arrived here in the DFW area, with their first store being right here in Frisco. The usual grocery store experience is very bland, I guess you could say. Um, and people just go in, get their groceries and leave. And HEB is kind of more of like a whole experience on its own. Um, they do a lot to try and kind of draw people in and engage with the people that are shopping there. From local Texas products to live cooking tutorials and even an in-store barbecue restaurant, HEB has made itself known even while not having been in the area until now. Since their opening two weeks ago, lines of people have been wrapping the store to try out or relieve the former experiences from other HEB stores. So when I saw that it was opening, I was super excited to go and, and just look at the products and the food that I grew up eating. It felt like when, when you were a kid that you went to your first like Black, Black Friday shopping experience. You go, you wait in line, and you get all excitement, and it was worth it. As a Texas-established company, HEB has not only aimed to serve their local communities through their products and store service, but through giving back to people in the community as well our culture that we have in the store and that's really what separates us from the other retailers but it's the people it's always going to be our people that work for us um, we're all purpose driven right and that's what that's what people wait for they want that experience from us that hospitality we truly truly believe that that's what brings people back as AGB continues to expand across the area the impact that their presence has already had will surely continue to grow 
For Real Top News, I'm Ricardo Yanez. Over the next several years, HEB has announced future locations in Plano, McKinney, Allen, Rockwall, and even Prosper. Lily Carter, a 17-year-old student who started with elementary school musical theater, is now playing at local venues and is building her social media presence. Samantha Mitchell has her story. Junior Lily Carter is advancing her music career one note at a time. I play guitar. I play electric and acoustic guitar. Um, I got my acoustic guitar in third grade, and so I've been playing since then. And I also play piano. Through her social media and supportive friends, Lily is getting an early start to her career. I mean, I love seeing like her covers on Instagram. Like any chance that she gets, she'll like cover one of the songs that she loves, but she'll make it like her own. It won't be like the same version as if you heard it on Spotify or heard it on Apple Music. Lily has been posting music content on Instagram and TikTok this past year. In addition to building her online presence, she is also performing at local venues. Um, I started doing like little gigs over the summer and they're just like little small local places and it's really fun and it's just a cool little vibe. The first time I went to one of her gigs, it was low-key really emotional because I've always seen her like as like a baby and seeing her like grow up and like actually do this in the real world and like see that she's doing what she loves just makes me super happy for her and makes me like want to do it myself or like go out there and like support her any chance that I get. While finding her voice and adding her own style to covers, she is inspiring others and plans to study and pursue music in the future. For Hilltop News, I'm Samantha Mitchell. Moving from the auditorium to the football field, this past week we saw football play away at Allen and cross country head out for the Dallas Jesuit Invitational. Connor Fuchs is in studio to fill you in on how both of these went, as well as catch you up on everything else Rock Hill Sports. Connor? Thank you, Veronica. Starting off with football, we saw our Blue Hawks travel out to Eagle Stadium to face off against the powerhouse in Allen. In a game where most people counted us out before the initial kickoff, our boys came out strong, going up 7-6 to end the first quarter, thanks to a touchdown catch by Eric Webb. The rest of the game did not go as our plugs would have wanted, allowing Allen to score 28 unanswered points. But within the final minute, football was able to knock in a rushing touchdown to put the end of the game 34-14 in favor of Allen. After two back-to-back -back tough weeks, our Blue Hawks get a bye this next week. They will return to action on the 14th at home versus Lillo. Now our volleyball team did not get an easy week either, having to face off against Boyd on Tuesday at home and then traveling out to Denton to face Geyer on Friday. Both these games unfortunately ended 3-0 in favor of the opposing teams, moving volleyball's record to 17-17 on the season. Our girls look to get back above 500 tomorrow night at home versus Braswell, a team they defeated 3-0 earlier in the year. Sitting currently 6th in the district, halfway through district play makes tomorrow's game for our girls a game they cannot afford to lose if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. Now speaking of playoffs, two weeks ago both water polo teams clinched playoff berth for the first time ever. Both girls and guys got a Playoff preview this past Wednesday, though, when they faced off against Ditton Geyer at home. Geyer quickly showed us that the postseason will not be a cakewalk for neither our boys or our girls, defeating our boys 17-13 and our girls 10-3. Both teams rebounded quickly, though, when they faced off against Ditton at home this past Saturday. Boys and girls both handled business effectively, winning both their respective games. Water Polo will be back in action for their final game of the regular season on Wednesday at home versus Prosper. Finally, this past Saturday, Cross Country traveled out to Oak Point for the Dallas Jesuit XC Invitational. It was a great meet overall for both our girls and boys, with our girls seeing four top 20 finishes between Lauren Polk, Alexia Callahan, Caitlin Wicker, and Anna Williams. The girls team overall also finished in second place for the meet. As for our boys, we saw Matthew Krasinic finish top 20 alongside Gabriel De La O. Now you may have noticed Cross Country has dedicated a lot of their season to Blake Barnes. Blake Barnes was a senior here at Rock Hill in its inaugural year. He currently holds the school record for boys cross country time and was a major part of the state team we saw back in 2020. The reason this season has been dedicated to Barnes, however, is not for his accomplishments. Sadly, this past May, we received some terrible news that Blake Barnes, at 18 years old, had suddenly passed away. For all he had done to help build our cross country program, Coach Morgan and the team have set out to honor him in any way they can. They even named their first race of the season in Blake Barnes' name. But one person who has been more affected than anyone else in that program is the senior that is having to try and fulfill a goal Barnes set for him before passing. Barnes, in only a year of wearing electric blue, left a huge impact on the cross-country program. The biggest impact he left behind was on sophomore Gabriel De La O that ran side-by-side -side with him at State in 2020. 
Now Gabe, two years later, is a senior of his own and carrying on the leadership duties Blake once held. So with Blake, he you know set a really good precedence for our program because he accomplished a lot of things that year and he was able to win the regional championship and was district MVP and was sixth in the state. And that just kind of set a level of eliteness for our boys program. And Gabe watched on to that. And not, I want to be Blake Barnes, but I want to work just as hard as him to carry on this legacy that we've created in year one. And he was a part of that legacy with Blake as well. And De La O took Barnes selflessness and leadership skills and is using them to try and propel this team back to the state level. It could very much be about him and him being the only senior. And this is my way or the highway. And I only care about myself because my last year, but it's the exact opposite with him. And he just embraces everybody on the team. And he wants to make sure they're doing really well, whether it's their personal goals or they're trying to accomplish the team's goals. To remember Blake, Cross Country set up a memorial in their trophy case. It showcases his picture alongside the shirt he left for Gabe that says, lead the boys to state, Gabe. However, Blake was not the only one with a message. Gabe also writes a message back to Blake before every race. I write FBB on my arm, um, on my right arm. Uh, it's for Blake Barnes, and so I try to get the other boys to do it too. Uh, I'm just trying to carry on his legacy because um, I'm trying to make this year for him. Uh, like specifically for him because he did so much for the team. While Gabe has put his own touch on leading the program, he also makes sure to do everything still in Blake's name. Fire up fire! Fire up fire! I'm so glad I got to cover the story and right here I have the bracelets Cross Country is using to honor Blake this year. On one side, the bracelets do say stay hard, which is the team motto, but on the other side, they say FTB and FTG, which means for the boys and for the girls, which is something Blake used to say a lot and something he wrote on Gabe's shirt that he left him. Honestly, I think it's been so inspiring to watch just how truly this has come just full circle for them. I agree. I think Rock Hill's doing an incredible job of honoring Blake, especially with the impact he had on their first season. Yeah, but for now, I think that's all the time we have on today's show. For Hilltop News, I'm Connor Fuchsa. I'm Ashley Salloway. And I'm Veronica Volchak. Keep rocking, Blue Hawks.